The journalists involved in unearthing one of the biggest scandals involving some of the biggest K-pop stars are coming forward to talk about the intense harassment campaigns that fans of these K-pop stars have launched against them. So let me take you back to 2016 where this particular story begins. A Seoul based newspaper reporter by the name of Park Hyo Sil received a tip about a K-pop star named Jung Jun Young being involved in a massive sex crime known as Molka. Basically, this reporter in 2016 gets a tip that this big K-pop star named Jung Jun Young, okay, had secretly recorded himself having sex with his girlfriend. That act is known as Molka in South Korea, and it is a crime. Now, this reporter reports on it and starts dealing with some really intense backlash from the fans of this K pop star. And by the way, it turns out that secretly recording women as a sex act is taking place, it's becoming more and more of a problem in South Korea. Oftentimes, the footage is uploaded to different websites frequented by men who pay these subscription fees to access the illegal films. In 2021 alone, the police reported. 16,866 digital sex crimes. There are cameras everywhere from toilets to motels, houses where you are living alone to schools. Uh, these and these pictures or film footage are distributed on pornography sites while you are not aware of them. They are combined with other graphic images to be pornographies and circulated again. Now, once Park broke the story, instead of Jung getting backlash for what he had done, Fans decided to attack the journalist instead, and they also went after, of course, his accuser. Let's watch. 압도적인 여론은 정준영은 억울한 피해자다라는 식의 그런 프레임이 형성이 되어서 마치 미디어가 악마적인 역할을 한것 같이 그리고 그 최선봉에 제가 있는 것 같이 이렇게 형성이 되었습니다. Park, who first reported on Jung's case. Is attacked by his fans and men calling themselves anti feminist. So, something else that Park had to deal with were uh, the fans of this K pop star contacting her editor and saying things like, if you don't sack her, we're going to set fire to your building. Park explained a little bit more about the harassment she received and the effect it had on her health. Let's take a look at that. 가장 첫 번째 공격은 댓글이라든가 악성 메일이었고 6개월쯤 지났을 때 갑자기 새벽에 전화가 걸려오기 시작했고 새벽 한 2시부터 오전 심할 때는 오전 5시까지 한 3, 4시간 정도 계속 전화가 울리는 너무 멘탈이 무너져서 집 밖에 나가는 것도 힘들고 그 사건을 겪은 이후에 제가 두번 유산을 해서 지금은 아이가 없는데 정말 힘은 들었지만 제가 관둔다면 그들이 너무 기뻐할 것 같아서 차마 관둘 수가 없더라고요. 그리고 제 뒤에 많은 여기자들이 또 동일한 피해를 입을 수 있고 저는 이 시간을 버텨내자라고 생각했던 것 같습니다. So for our audio audience, she, the stress of the harassment and the threats led to her suffering from two miscarriages. And she said, you know what, this has been awful, absolutely shattering for my life, but I don't want to give up. This is an important story and I want to stay on it. So I just give journalists like her a lot of credit. Knowing that you're going to get that kind of backlash and still staying on the story is incredibly important. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. Now, the case became stagnant for a few years until another reporter came into the mix named Kang Jung Yoon, who received proof of additional crimes committed by Jung and other K pop stars. When Jung was first interviewed by police, this is, this is hilarious. So, he was first interviewed by police in 2016 about Molka, and he was asked to hand over his phone for further investigation. But he 
decided not to. He's like, no, I'm not gonna turn over my phone to the authorities. Instead, I'm gonna hand it over to private forensics, a, a private forensics company so they can do the investigation. He didn't know though that at the time they made a copy of the phone's data. And then three years later, an anonymous informant with access to it decided to leak it and the content was eventually reached Kang, the other journalist in the story. Now Kang had expected to see the footage of Jung and his girlfriend that Park had reported on in 2016, but it wasn't there. Instead, she uncovered a group chat which contained a horde of sexually explicit videos and images of unconscious women being shared amongst the group, which involved Jung and other male K-pop stars. So this included FT Island guitarist Choi Jung Hoon and Big Bang singer uh, Swin Gri. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Kang also unearthed uh, disturbing exchanges de detailing the gang assault of an unconscious woman who had fallen and hit her head. And in those messages, you'll read things like, quote, I just I got so scared yesterday. It sounded like her skull was cracking, one of the men admitted. Jung messaged, literally the funniest night of my life. I mean, like I <laughs> I mean, the cruelty is just amazing and disgusting. The fact that fandom leads people to act in awful ways is something that should be studied more deeply by, you know, behavioral psychologists. But it's incredible that even with this in-depth reporting proving that these K-pop stars were engaged in illegal and terrible exploitative activity, uh, the fans just didn't want to accept the truth. Yeah, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, this goes along with uh, so many themes we cover on the Young Turks. One is uh, interminable bias. Uh, if you like something and you made it part of your identity, whether it's a K-pop group or a country or your ethnic background, there's no end to your bias. The bias just will not stop. It doesn't matter what the facts are. It doesn't matter how terrible uh, an action uh, your the thing you're a fan of took. You'll defend it. And you'll defend it despite overwhelming evidence. And it's, it's a sick, sad part of humanity, but that's that's what happens almost every time. And so does that apply to everyone? No, but does it apply unfortunately to the majority? Yes, as it did here. And this is over the silliest thing in the world. It's, it, they're literally pop stars, who cares? I know easy for us to say, but some people get wrapped their identity around them. But I got news for you, they're not your friends. They don't know you and uh, and they're not going to go out with you. And if they do, they might do terrible things to you. Uh, so now does that apply to every K-pop star? Of course not, of course not. It just applies to these guys who did this particular thing. And it doesn't mean that people who like K-pop music are somehow guilty. You guys didn't have anything to do with it. So what are you getting all worked up over? So silly. The second uh, unifying theme between this story and every other story we cover is the media wars. Anytime somebody doesn't like something, they do propaganda. So in this case, the K-pop guys had a lot of power and money. So they did propaganda against the reporters who accurately reported the news. And the whole point of that, look, this goes back a long, long time. But one of the top people that invented this method that wasn't actually not a person, but an industry it was the tobacco industry. And their plan was not to convince people that smoking was good for you. It was just to confuse them enough to get to a stalemate, right? So, well, I don't know if it's good for me or not. All right, yeah, I'm going to keep smoking. And they did an enormous amount of propaganda and they created media wars to confuse people. So that happens now every time. Russia invades Ukraine, media war. Hamas attacks Israel, media war. Israel obliterates Gaza, media war. Biden, media war. Trump, media war. Confusion, confusion, confusion. Big oil. Is it? Is there really climate change? In this case, Oh, you said that I did these terrible things. I did do these terrible things. I just want to get to a stalemate. Oh yeah, no, she's lying. She's the evil one. She hates men. She hates K-pop. Attack her. All in self-preservation. So they do because they don't know. And those poor women, what they had to go through. Look, these days, journalists all across the world, ones in Russia, ones in Gaza, in South Korea, you name it. Some of the bravest people on earth. 
So thank you for doing this great coverage and for exposing it and for protecting the women of South Korea. And so I hope humanity gets better one day and doesn't immediately go to bias and does and stops believing these media wars, stop believing the propaganda. But it's gonna take a lot more than this to get there. There's nothing more liberating than accepting that someone or something you once supported ended up being wrong and you allow yourself to acknowledge that and move on. That's extremely liberating. It's not anyone's job to provide cover for anyone's illegal behavior, bad behavior, terrible policies. So if you find yourself providing excuses or engaging in apologia for terrible people like Keffels, just accept the reality and liberate yourself from having to live in this prison of defending the indefensible. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.